here's an example involving accelerated particles and a mass spectrometer. Negative, singly ionized atoms of carbon-12 and carbon-14 are accelerated through a potential difference of 5.74 kilovolts. They're then deflected in a magnetic field of half a tesla. Do they hit the top plate or the bottom plate of the detector? And how far apart are the carbon-12 and carbon-14 ions at the detector? As you can see, I've redrawn the diagram with my accelerating plates. If I want negative ions to accelerate, I need the plate on the left-hand side to be negative and the plate on the right-hand side to be positive, and then the ions enter the magnetic field. We know that as the particles enter at 90 degrees to the magnetic field, their trajectory will be a circle. And in order to find out in what direction that circle will be, I place my right hand in the opposite direction of the motion of the negative charges, bend my fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. So you want the palm of your hand to point towards the computer screen. And then our thumb points down. So this means that the particles travel in a half circle downward before they hit the detector. While the particles are in the magnetic field, their trajectory has a radius of ma their mass of the particle multiplied by the speed divided by the charge multiplied by the magnetic field. And we can rearrange this equation to solve for the speed of the particles, which will be the radius multiplied by the charge multiplied by the magnetic field and divided by the mass. In the accelerator part of the apparatus, we can use conservation of energy to find the speed at which the particles emerge from the accelerator plates. So, starting with the initial potential energy and adding the initial kinetic energy and adding the work done by non-conservative forces, that should be equal to the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy. We can replace the initial potential energy by Q multiplied by the initial potential. The initial kinetic energy is zero. The work done by non-conservative forces is zero. The final potential energy is Q times V final. And the final kinetic energy is one-half MV final squared. And recall that the speed with which the particles emerge from the accelerating plates is equal to the speed in the magnetic field. But first let's rearrange the equation so that we have um, delta V, the potential difference between the plates. So we can write that minus Q multiplied by delta V, remember delta V stands for V final minus V initial, is equal to one half MV final squared. Let's quickly check that the left-hand side of the equation is actually positive. We know that it is because the charge of the particles is negative and delta V is positive. V final is the high potential plate, V initial is the low potential plate. Now we are going to replace V final with RQB over M. When that is squared, it becomes R squared, Q squared, B squared over M squared. And hopefully now we can make a few simplifications. On the right hand side, the mass on the numerator cancels the square on the mass on the denominator. And there's the charge on the left hand side of the equation that cancels the square on the charge on the right hand side of the equation. So we get negative delta V is equal to one half R squared Q B squared divided by M. And we are going to rearrange this and solve for R. R is the square root of the negative of the potential difference multiplied by two times the mass of the particles divided by the charge and multiplied by B squared. Now remember that what's under the square root really is a positive number because we know that the charge of our ions is negative. So there is no problem. Let's plug the numbers in for carbon 12. So the square root of negative 5,040 volts multiplied by 2 multiplied the mass of carbon 12, which is 
12 times the atomic mass unit, 12 times 1.7 times 10 to the negative 27 kilos. We are going to divide that by negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 multiplied by half a Tesla squared. And we get that the radius for carbon 12 in this particular case is 7.65 centimeters. For carbon 14, the square root of negative 5740 multiplied by 2 multiplied by the mass of carbon 14 which is 14 times the atomic mass unit 14 times 1.7 times 10 to the negative 27 divided by negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs multiplied by half a decimal squared is 8.26 centimeters the separation between the two isotopes at the detector will be the difference between the two diameters because remember the trajectory of the particles in the magnetic field is really a half circle. So 2 times the radius of the carbon 14 minus 2 times the radius of the carbon 12 is 1.22 centimeters and this is about half the separation that you will find in our other problem that involves an example with a mass spectrometer. The difference between this example and the other example, which of course we encourage you to watch, is that in the other example there's a velocity selector and so the accelerating voltage needs to be readjusted so that the carbon 12 and the carbon 14 ions move at the same speed when they enter the magnetic field. Here all there is is an accelerator and the two sets of ions the two isotopes are accelerated through the same potential difference so necessarily the carbon 14 is a little bit slower when it enters the magnetic field because it has a greater mass and this results in the radius of the carbon 14 being a little bit smaller than it is in the other example and therefore the separation between the two isotopes is also smaller. Here is the full solution on one page. Spread the joy of physics and don't forget to watch our other example of a solution involving a mass spectrometer.